In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, of course, is the great feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. He was a secretary of sorts of Blessed St. Peter the Apostle, the Galilean fisherman. And thanks, perhaps, to the fight between St. Paul and St. Barnabas, they separated by the Holy Ghost, uh, for the ministry over a dispute of St. Mark, the evangelist. St. Mark had perhaps homesickness, so he left the first voyage. And St. Barnabas didn't mind his leaving on this first voyage, whereas St. Paul was upset and didn't want him to come back on the second voyage. And thus, this gave St. Mark a chance to go to Cyrus with St. Barnabas. And if he would have had tarried along with St. Paul more time, perhaps he would never have been close with St. Peter later, and perhaps would not even have written the Gospel of St. Mark. So God has a plan even in the midst of our difficulties or frictions even with others. Uh, St. Peter, in his salutation in his epistle, mentions St. Mark, my son Mark. That's how close he became with him. The Romans begged uh, to put the substance of Peter's frequent discourses of our Lord's life into writing. So they asked St. Mark to do this. And he did this, but under the very caring eye and supervision of St. Peter himself. This brief but graphic gospel had the impression of St. Peter's character and way of being. Here are some details according to St. Mark's account that we don't get elsewhere. Uh, When Jesus is tempted in the desert, uh, he was with the beasts. When he slept at the bottom of the boat, he slept upon a pillow. He embraced the little children as he bid them come nigh. And he said, peace, be still, commanding the storm to calm. And then when he made the dumb speak and the dead rise, St. Mark even produced his very sounds from his mouth as he did those things. Eth feta and kali talitha kumi. And so to the looking around with anger at the Pharisees on a part of, of Jesus and the sighing deeply, the groanings that he recorded, all these things were treasured in the memory of the penitent apostle, uh, St. Peter. Now, after St. Peter's martyrdom, uh, St. Mark went off to Egypt and to found the church in Alexandria. It was then that the disciples there became renowned uh, for their piety and asceticism. Under his leadership, under his guidance, bishopric, uh, the people uh, gained leaps and bounds and Christian perfection. St. Jerome even says that it was then that St. Mark became the father of the Anchorites. Thus the monastic traditions could thrive for the first time in, in Christianity. And thus the Egyptian deserts were thronged by these disciplined and prayerful men. So for our monastery, we have a very special spot in the heart for St. Mark, the Apostle, who instigated many of these things at the very roots, uh, being a docile instrument of the Holy Ghost and of Christ himself. It was also said there that he set up the first Christian school of thought of Christianity which in turn produced many doctors and bishops of Holy Mother Church. The the, the school of Alexandria so steeped 
and wisdom and practicality. And after many years, on the eighth year of Nero, <clears throat> leading the church in Egypt, he was seized by the heathen and dragged by ropes over stones. And then the next day, this was repeated. And then he received the vision of angels and he heard the very voice of Jesus and thus died for Christ and received his reward. So as we continue to, um, to sing the praises of St. Mark in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us ask our Lord to give us that same passion, that same love, that same polarization that guided the very heart of St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.